Hello friends, today we are going to talk about polycystic ovarian disease. Many patients have a lot of queries on polycystic ovarian disease or polycystic ovarian syndrome and they are actually really worried. So we thought we'll make a presentation in English on polycystic ovarian syndrome. We've also made a presentation in Hindi as well as Punjabi in the previous videos. So we will be talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome in English. So what is basically polycystic ovarian syndrome and why polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease is becoming so common these days. The reason is that the lifestyle that women are having these days is very stagnant. So in the previous times, if we talk of the time of our parents, the average weight of a normal lady used to be some 45 to 50 kg. Now the average weight of females is rising and uh, Usually we see ladies are having a large weight like 60 kg, 70 kg and because of excessive weight and because of uh, lifestyle issues, polycystic ovarian syndrome is rising these days. Mm -hmm. What is happening in polycystic ovarian disease or polycystic ovarian syndrome is that the ovary gets confused. A lot of follicles are developing but none is reaching maturity. So a normal lady has regular periods because the egg starts increasing in size and the egg becomes mature and it ruptures and regular periods come. But in polycystic ovarian syndrome, the ovary has large number of follicles and uh, these follicles are in a state of stagnation. None of them grows. So because the follicle is unable to grow, the periods are not regular. So some ladies don't have periods, uh, some have uh, periods after every two to three months and some don't have periods and they have to take medicine to have. So it depends upon the disease severity. So in milder diseases, uh, maybe the periods will come, but they will come after 35 to 40 days. Some uh, people will have a more severe disease the periods will come after two to three months and some will not have periods and they will have to take medicine to have periods. And because there is no regular process of menstruation, once they have periods, let us say a female has periods after three months, four months, there will be no mechanism to stop these periods. And so as a result, the periods will be very problematic, like they will not stop and they will be bleeding continuously for a couple of days because the mechanism to stop bleeding is uh, has hampered. So we have discussed that polycystic ovarian disease is on a rise. And secondly, it is because of a stagnant lifestyle. Thirdly, genetics also plays a role. Ladies who have polycystic ovarian disease have a high likelihood of transmitting it to their children. If some patients come to us with polycystic ovarian disease, they will say that my mother also had a similar problem. So genetics also has a role. So uh, according to the criteria, uh, Rotterdam criteria, the polycystic ovarian syndrome has three main things. One is irregular periods. Second is the polycystic ovarian, the polycystic ovaries on scan. And third is hyperandrogenism, which is seen in the form of excessive male pattern of hair growth. Like females will have a male type of hair growth on their face and on their chest and other parts of the body. So male type of hair growth is very commonly seen in polycystic ovarian disease patients. So any two on three, like let us say, if they have hyperandrogenism as well as polycystic ovary on scan, then also any two on three or all three, would patients would be categorized as having polycystic ovarian disease. So what are the treatments and what patients should do once they are diagnosed? So the first thing is that one should not panic because I see uh, patients come to us, they don't have period for 15 days and uh, they would get panicked that my periods have not come. Uh, they just want that the periods should come in time and they should come in time on their own. So it's like the clock has stopped. And if the clock has stopped, automatically it will not just start. Whenever we have patients who have irregular cycles, they come to us. We tell them that the first thing that you should do is once you have been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian disease, you should not panic. And then you should find reasonable solutions at the age group that you are in. So we'll be discussing the age groups that is in teenagers or in ladies who have not yet married. Uh, there will be a different set of advices from our side in ladies who have married and are keen on having the child would have different advices and then the menopausal ladies or close to menopause where you know they're about to achieve menopause we will have different advices for them so in case of teenagers like in when teenagers come to us with symptoms of polycystic ovarian disease we tell them that you know you should uh, have good lifestyle the first thing that we advise them don't have a stagnant lifestyle try to lose weight because many people have a notion that their weight is gaining because they have irregular periods, whereas it is exactly the opposite. That is, because their weight is gaining, 
they are developing polycystic ovarian disease. So the first thing that they face is their irregular periods. So we tell them that don't expect periods to come on their own. You can have a medicine to get your periods. So if one has three to four periods a year, that is enough. So it should not be that in uh, patients who have polycystic ovarian disease, they get panicked every month that every month the periods should come. If they are not coming every three months, four months, if the periods are coming, even if you're taking medicine to have your periods, it's okay. So three to four periods a year is enough. And uh, we tell our young patients to have a good lifestyle, to avoid outside junk food, to avoid a chemical exposure like cosmetics and overuse of uh, perfumes. We tell them to avoid all this and then have a good lifestyle in form of exercise and diet. And then if they don't have periods, they can take medicine to have periods. And if they have excessive hair growth, once their lifestyle modifications start, they will automatically have uh, the rate of growth will reduce. And if it is not being managed, uh, they can use some vaccine or some laser treatments to get rid of the extra hair. Then uh, when we talk of the ladies who are keen on having a baby. So the first thing that one should know is that polycystic ovarian disease is not an indication for IVF. Most of the patients with PCOD are uh, sorted out without IVF. So that's like a good news that we don't need IVF because many people come and get panicked that, you know, we might need IVF. So how do we go about an infertile patient who is keen on getting pregnant? So as we said, that periods are not regular. So egg is not being formed. So what we do is we push the egg to development and then tell them good days to dry naturally. And most of the ladies get pregnant with simple ovulation induction drugs. However, there are two things that need to be good before we, okay. we say that, yes, you will get pregnant. The first is that the husband's semen analysis should be good and the tubes should be patent. So if the tubes are patent and the husband is good and the lady has polycystic ovarian disease and she is young, uh, then a simple ovulation induction. So what is ovulation induction? We give oral drugs and sometimes injections to uh, make one egg and uh, we rupture that egg and we tell the patient to try naturally in those days and most of the times they conceive. So uh, these cycles can be done back to back or with a cycle of break and uh, five to six cycles or uh, 70 to 75 percent of the patients will conceive. If one has a tubal problem or if the male is not good then it might form an indication for IVF but PCOD would not be an indication for IVF in that now, if patients don't get pregnant by ovulation induction and try naturally, then we move on to the next step. And then these patients might land up in doing an IVF. So what are the reasons in patients who are having polycystic ovarian disease but are not getting pregnant with the try naturally cycles is that either their system is not working, that is the tube is not catching hold of the egg and embryo is not being formed and it's not coming to the uterus or there could be problem in the egg quality. 10% uh, roughly 10% of the patients of PCO uh, might be having egg quality issues and these are the ones who might not even get pregnant despite doing an IVF. They might not form good quality embryos. Some 20 to 30% of the patients would get pregnant with IVF. So uh, this is how we treat. So let's just revise. So patients who are keen on having uh, pregnancy the first thing that we do is we do ovulation induction and try naturally provided the tubes are patent and the husband is normal. And then if the patient does not conceive in six cycles, then we take them forwards towards IVF and a few of them will get pregnant and some of them might not get pregnant with IVF also because of poor quality. The point is that uh, PCO patients have a good likelihood of getting pregnant naturally with simple advices of a fertility consultant. So what about patients who are in the perimenopausal age? What are the advices that we give them if they have had PCOD in the previous times? So if they have had PCO, uh, we tell them that you have a very high likelihood of developing hypertension and diabetes. So these are the things. The lifestyle modifications will continue in that age group also. So once one had a child, then later on for the long term, for lifelong, uh, they should continue with the lifestyle modification. That is a good diet and exercise which will help them in avoiding diabetes and hypertension. So maintaining a good ideal body weight and having a good lifestyle will help them uh, avoid uh, developing diabetes and hypertension later on in their life. So the idea of making this presentation is that uh, any patient who has polycystic ovarian disease should uh, visit a fertility consultant and they can get good advices on how to manage throughout their life 
as to how to manage polycystic ovarian disease because polycystic ovarian disease is on a rise and uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, PCO patients these days and we also get patients who who tell us that uh, you know we get couples who come for advices premarital advices as to you know this lady does not have regular periods and she has PCOD what is her prognosis and so we keep on counseling them that every second or third lady is having PCO these days so it's not something one should be really panicked about and if you have any questions you can uh, put your questions in the comment section and we will be very happy to reply thank you very much